Hello and welcome back all my real estate enthusiasts. In today's video, we'll dive into the concept of proration, a vital skill for all aspiring agents preparing for the real estate state exam. My name is Maggie Reyoso and I am a licensed real estate instructor and I bring you tips and tricks that'll help you pass the math portion of your real estate state exam. I'm also the proud owner of Maggie's Real Estate Academy, where you can attend my courses and get your Florida real estate license. Although I'm in Florida, the math on this video will help you no matter what state you're in, since math is a universal language after all. Okay, let's get back to prorations. Whether it's annual taxes, monthly rent, or even HOA payments, understanding proration is crucial for success on your exam. We'll explore proration methods for both 365 day and 360 day calendars. So let's jump right in. Proration is an important part of buying or selling a house. It's when the cost like property taxes, HOA fees, utility expenses, and or rent payments are divided fairly between the buyer and the seller based on how long each owned the property. This helps make sure that everyone pays their fair share and avoids any problems. Proration is really important because it keeps things fair and helps prevent arguments or confusion about who has to pay what. It makes sure that everyone involved in the sale pays the right amount of money, which helps make the whole process go smoothly. For proration problems, there are three easy steps to follow and five rules to counting dates. Let's start with the five rules to counting dates. Number one, if the question does not state how many days to use, you are to use the 365 day calendar. Number two, if it's for a 365 day calendar and you're prorating a monthly fee like a rent or an HOA payment, you will divide by the number of days in the month given for closing. So if the closing is scheduled for sometime in May, you'll use 31 days since May has 31 days. And if the closing is in February, you guessed it, you'll use 28 days and so on and so forth. Number three. If it's a 360 day calendar, you are to use 30 days for each month. And yes, even February too. Number four, if closing day belongs to the seller, you count the day of closing in the total days in step two, which we'll discuss next. Number five, if the day of closing belongs to the buyer, you do not count the day of closing, which we'll also discuss next. Now that we've gotten the rules of the game out of the way, Let's go over the three easy steps to solving proration questions. Step one is to find the daily rate. Basically, how much will it cost per day? Simply divide the total amount of the yearly tax by either 360 days or 365 days to get your daily amount. Step two is to find out how many days the seller owns the property for that year or month. Remember, if the closing day belongs to the seller, you will count the closing day as part of your total days. If the closing day belongs to the buyer, you do not count the closing day in your total days. Also, as we discussed earlier, if it says to use 360 calendar days, each month will have a total of 30 days. And if it says to use 365 days, you'll use the number of days for each month. Don't worry. I'll show you a little hack on how to know the amount of days each month has a little later on in the video. And finally, step three is to just multiply step one by step two. And there you have it, super easy. Okay now, here's the hack I promised you on how to know the total days each month has. To find the number of days each month has, you're gonna use the knuckle method where each knuckle counts for 31 days and the indentation between the knuckles is 28 days or 30 days. So it'll look something like this. January has 31 days. February has 28 days. March has 31 days. April has 30 days. May has 31 days. June has 30 days. 
July has 31 days, then you start all over. August has 31 days, September has 30 days, October has 31 days, November has 30 days, and December has 31 days. All right, now that we have all that information on how to solve these types of problems, let's jump right in and go over a few questions so you could get some practice and perfect your proration calculation skills. First up, let's work out some problems using the 365 day proration method for annual fees. Number one, Alex sold his property on June 15th with annual property taxes of $4,800. What will be the seller's portion of the property taxes if the closing date belongs to the seller? Consider a 365-day calendar. In this property, we see that it is a total amount of taxes for the year of $4,800. Step one is to find the daily rate. So it says to use 365-day calendar. So now I'm going to divide 4,800 by 365 days. That's going to equal $13 and you have to round to four decimal places. So since this says 15068, I'm going to round it up to $13 and then 1507. Step two is now to find the total amount of days the seller owns the property. Since the closing is scheduled for June 15th and it belongs to the seller, I'm going to start counting from January. So January, February, March, April, then May and June. January has 31 days, February has 28, March has 31, April has 30, May has 31, and then June, since it belongs to the seller, will have 15 days. Now, we're gonna add up all of those days and we get a total of 166 days. So now, all we have to do is multiply step one's total by the total amount of days. So, 30. 15.1507 times 166 equals 2,183 dollars. And then it says 01. So my answer is B. Number two. Tom sold his property on August 1st with annual property taxes of $3,600. The closing date belongs to the buyer. Using a 365-day calendar, what will be the seller's responsibility of the property taxes? In this example, the property taxes for the year are $3,600. We are also to use 365-day calendar. We have a closing date set for August 1st, and it belongs to the buyer. So step one is I'm going to find the total daily rate. I do that by dividing $3,600 by 365 days. That's going to give me 9.86301. So we can safely say it just is 9.863. Now we find how many days the seller owns the property. So we have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. Since the closing is on August 1st and it belongs to the buyer, August gets zero days. So now we just fill in the rest of the days. January has 31, February has 28, March has 31, April has 30, May has 31, June has 30, July has 31. We add up all these days 
and that equals 212 total days. Now, all we have to do is multiply this amount by this amount. So when you multiply 9.863 by 212 days, you get a total of $2,090.956. So since this number is five or greater, we're going to raise this one, leaving it a total of $2,090.96. As my final answer so the answer to number two is C now let's work out some problems using the 360 day proration method for annual payments number three Linda sold her property on May 1st with annual property taxes of $6,000 what will be the seller's portion of the property taxes if the closing date belongs to the seller? Consider a 360-day calendar. In this example, I see the closing date is set for May 1st. We have property taxes for the year of $6,000. We're to use a 360-day calendar and the closing date belongs to the seller. So step one is to find the price per day. So I will take $6,000 and divide it by 360 days in the calendar. That equals 16.6666 and then seven. Remember to use four decimal places. So I round it to five to then get 16 point six 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 seven now I have to find how many days the seller owned the property for that year so we start January February March April and May since it's telling me to use a 360 day calendar I'm going to use 30 days for each month except for May so January has 30 February has 30 March has 30, April has 30, and May has one because the seller owns the day of closing. So now we have to add these up and that equals 121 days. Now we just multiply step one by step two to get our final answer. So 16.6667 times 121 equals $2,016 and then 670. So it ends up at $2,016.67 that the seller needs to pay at closing. So the answer is D. Number four. Ryan sold his property on April 15th with annual property taxes of $5,400. What will be the seller's portion of the property taxes if the closing date is prorated and it belongs to the buyer? Consider a 360-day calendar. In this example, we're given property taxes of $5,400 and we have a 360-day calendar Closing day is April 15th, and the closing day belongs to the buyer. Step one is always to find how much is the daily rate. So I'm going to divide $5,400 by 360 days. That equals $15 per day. Now, all we have to do is find out how many days the seller owns the property. So if the day of closing is April 15th, I know that January, February, March, and April is all we have to count. Since it's 360 day calendar, each month is given 30 days, except for April because we're closing on April 15th. But since it belongs to the buyer, we're only going to take 14 of those days. Add up all those days and we get a total of 100 four days. Now we just multiply step one total by step two total. 
So $15 times 104 days equals $1,560. So the answer to this one is B. In this section, we'll work out some problems using the 365-day proration method for monthly amounts to be prorated. Number five. The monthly HOA fee for a property is $350. If a seller closed on November 12th, how much will be their portion of the HOA fee for that month? Assume a 365-day calendar. Here the monthly HOA is $350. We are scheduled to close on November 12th and we're given a 365-day calendar. In this question, since we're not given who the closing date belongs to, you are to automatically assume that the closing date belongs to the seller. So the first thing we have to do is find out the total daily amount. So we're going to take the monthly HOA fee of $350 and we're going to divide it by however many days November has. Since November has 30 days, we're going to divide by 30. That equals 11.6666 and then repeating 6. So that means we're going to use 11.6666. Seven. Now we find out how many days the seller owns the property for the month of November. Here, since it does not belong to the buyer, we're going to include 12 days. So since it's just in November, it is a total of 12 days. Now step three is to multiply. So 11.6667 times 12 equals $140.00 even. So my answer to this one is A. Number six, Emma sold her condo where the tenant pays a monthly rent of $1,200. The closing day is on May 20th and the buyer is responsible for closing day. How much will Emma receive as her share of the rent for the month of May? In this example, we see that the amount of rent to be prorated is $1,200. We see that the closing day is scheduled for May 20th and the buyer is responsible for day of closing. Here, it is not given the calendar days to use, so we must assume that 365 day calendar is the one we're going to use. So in a 365 day calendar, since May has 31 days, that's what I'm going to use for step one. Remember, step one is to find the daily total. So I'm going to divide $1,200 by 31, which is the amount of days May has. So $1,200 divided by 31 equals 38.70967. So we're going to use 38 point seven zero nine seven now we have to find out how many days emma owned the property in the month of may since it's may 20th the day of closing and the buyer is responsible for closing day that means she only owned the property 19 days so now we just multiply step one total by step two total and we get 38.7097 times 19 equals $735.484. So since this is five or less, it just stays at $735.48. So my answer to this one is C. And in this section, We'll work out some problems using the 360-day proration method for monthly amounts to be prorated. Number seven, the monthly HOA fee for a property is $250. If the seller closed on the property on February 15th, how much will be their portion of the HOA fee 
for that month if the seller owns the day of closing. Assume a 360 day calendar. Here I see that the monthly HOA fee is $250. They are set to close on February 15 and the seller owns the day of closing. We're also to use 360 days. So step one is to find the daily rate. So I'm going to take the HOA fee of $250 and divide it by 30 because we're using the 360 day calendar. It does not matter that February only has 28 days. Remember when using a 360 day calendar, every month has 30 days. Now let's divide 250 by 30. That equals 8.3333 repeating. Okay, so we could just leave it as 8.33333. Now we're going to find out how many days the seller owned the property in February. So for February, if the closing date is set for February 15th and the seller owns the day of closing, that's going to equal a total of 15 days in February. So now all we do is multiply 8.3333 by 15 and we get a total of 124.99 and nine it keeps repeating nine well so round it up and that's going to equal 125 dollars even so the answer to this one is a number eight the monthly hoa fee for a property is 300 dollars if a buyer closed on April 20th and is responsible for the day of closing, how much will the seller's portion of the HOA fee amount to for that month? Assume a 360 day calendar. For this question, the HOA fee is $300. They're closing on April 20th. Buyer is responsible for closing date and we're using 360 days. So we're going to take $300 of the HOA fee and divide it by 30. Even though April has 30 days in it already, since given the 360 day calendar, remember to use 30 days for every month. Now, when we divide 30 into 300, we get $10. That is going to cost $10 per day. Now we're going to have to find out how many days in April the seller owned the property. So if the buyer is responsible for day of closing and they're closing on April 20th, that means it is 19 days only. Now to find the answer is just 10 times 19 and that's going to equal $190. So my answer is B. And there you have it. Now you should be able to solve these proration questions like a pro. In this video, we explored the concept of proration in real estate transactions, covering annual taxes, monthly fees, and the use of both 360 and 365 day calendars. Understanding proration is a very important concept for aspiring agents preparing for the real estate state exam. By mastering proration, you'll be equipped to accurately calculate and distribute expenses between buyers and sellers, ensuring fairness and transparency throughout the transaction. Understanding the concept of proration will help you guide your clients in understanding the real estate closing procedures. If you found this video helpful in mastering proration, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with any fellow aspiring agents you may know. Click on the notification bell to stay updated with our latest real estate math content. Remember, a solid understanding of proration is key to acing your real estate state exam. 
Stay tuned for more valuable insights and math tips from me, Maggie Deoso, right here on Just Call Maggie. If you're looking to elevate your math understanding and boost your chances of acing the real estate exam, I want to share something special with you. Introducing Math Skills for Real Estate Success, your ultimate companion to mastering real estate math packed with comprehensive exercises, step-by-step -step explanations, and invaluable tips. This workbook is designed to help you conquer any math challenge that comes your way. Head over to justcallmaggie.com forward slash shop and grab your copy today. Trust me, this workbook will be your secret weapon in becoming a math wits in the world of real estate.